Good morning, Senator. Welcome back to the show. Good to be in my hometown, David. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, it's good to have you back in some hot weather. It is hot and it's dry. So we had some hot action in the Supreme Court last week, right? Two big cases. The Supreme Court comes down, basically keeps ACA intact, and then uh, a ruling that basically makes same-sex marriage the law of, of the land. You criticized both decisions. What, what was wrong with both of those decisions? Well, I think it relates to Obamacare. Uh, Obamacare is, is creating tremendous harm on millions of Americans. We're seeing premiums going up, deductibles going up. In fact, the state exchanges, many of them are struggling financially. We've lost the freedom and choice that we used to have in making this very, very important decision on health care. So I was uh, disappointed in the uh, decision, and uh, I support the repeal of Obamacare. It reminds me of growing up in fishing that when your line gets really, really tangled up, you try to tangle it up. Sometimes you have to cut the line and tie on a new fly. I think that's where we're at right now with Obamacare. It is a 2,700-page tangled mess. It's a poorly written law, and it's having uh, it's creating a lot of problems right now for the American people. Now, you said in the press release that was sent out that uh, you were looking for a, perhaps a Montana-built solution for health care. What, mm -hmm. what would that look like exactly? Yeah, well, I think most Montanans have a, a, an instinct that a Washington, D.C.-led solution is not going to be the best solution. We can do better. Obviously, what works in Montana may be very, very different than New York or California or Florida. So a couple of things I'd like to see is expand the, the health savings accounts. We, they used to be larger. Obamacare cut them down. I'd like to see the ability for all Americans, all Montanans, to be able to deduct their health care expenses like you do if you are uh, getting your health care through your employer. Uh, I think we want to provide more choice, allow portability of health care insurance. But the bottom line is returning that choice, that freedom, back to the patient. Put the patient and the doctor back in the center of that equation, not D.C. bureaucracy. You know, it's interesting. When I, I just took 17 students, we were talking about this abroad in the U.K., and we, went, we had to go to the hospital. Actually, I had a student that hit her knee, mm -hmm. and she had to go to the emergency room. We had no paperwork. Uh, we didn't pay anything, <laughs> and we weren't even U.K. citizens. So this is a single-payer plan that a lot of people freak out about, and it seemed to be okay. I was just wondering, why do we have to rely upon health care uh, being provided by employers? Maybe, maybe this system might have been more sensible? I well, I, I want that it. choice to be, to be made by the, by the individual. Uh, you see, uh, whether it's Obamacare, the challenge we have right now with the VA, mm -hmm. the challenge we have with Indian Health Services, Anytime the federal government takes over a system, it ends up being very, very bureaucratic and oftentimes costly. Somebody said the other day, there's nothing compassionate about a bureaucracy. You don't want to have to navigate through a bureaucracy. Look at those veterans dealing with the VA at the moment. Uh, you know, there, there's waiting lists, there's rationing of services. You don't want to be at the mercies of a bureaucracy when you're making a very important health care decision. Governor uh, Bobby Jindal of uh, Louisiana, who's running for president, basically came out after those two decisions and said, let's just get rid of the Supreme Court. He was very upset at uh, what he saw as the overriding of the will of the people when it came to gay marriage. Do you think we should get rid of the Supreme Court? No, I don't think. I mean, that's a very, very important part of, uh, of our institutions of government. But I think he, he raises a legitimate concern as it relates to the court overruling the will of the people. I think it's important that uh, we have democratic processes, especially in some of these issues that are very, very contentious. They've been very, very polarizing. And you know, the, the people of Montana, by two to one majority, define marriage as being between one man and one woman. When, at the ballot box, let the people of Montana decide how we want to define marriage. Not having a court that, by the way, that court was deeply divided. It was a 5-4 decision. Let's return those decisions back to the states, like we do with our tax laws, like we do with adoption. There's so many very important issues where the states can have primacy. I think marriage should be one of those. Well, thanks for coming to the studio today. I really appreciate your time. It's good to be here.